And then on performance engines, and especially race cars and well-made engines, and many two-strokes, they're called forge pistons. And that's where sort of just a, a round, not quite molten, but warm blob of aluminum is put into a mold of the shape of the piston, and a many-ton press rams and pounds it like this, and that blob of aluminum, which is still a solid, forms itself into the shape of the piston, and that makes one of the strongest pistons. This one's hyper-eutectic, and it's got a more exotic metal than just plain aluminum, and it's cast in a different way, but it's still not as good as the forge piston. You'll also notice on the side of pistons that aren't too worn, but the sidewall, or the skirt, seems rough like they didn't machine it very smooth. They did that on purpose. That also helps hold oil better too. This large surface area on the piston is there for two reasons. One is it stops the piston from twisting very much in the cylinder bore, which makes it last longer. And two, you need this large surface area to gently contact the cylinder to carry away the heat that's on the top of the piston. If an engine is running too lean, or like in a snowmobile or something, or a two-stroke, very often even melts here, right through the crown, and then all of a sudden you lose all your compression when a hole blows right through. When an engine in a car, for example, runs out of coolant and it overheats, the next time you go to restart it, and it doesn't start, and it sounds like it's got no compression, what happens is, is the top side of the piston has got so hot that the rings have actually started to melt a little bit to the ring grooves, and they've lost their springiness, and there's no way to get that engine restarted because the rings no longer grip the cylinder wall. When reinstalling your rings on an engine, don't just spread them open and try to drop it on. That's not how you do it. You sit it on top and push one corner down until that corner drops into the groove. Then you twist and peel it on. And you always start with the bottom ring first, the second ring, then the top ring. Some of the rings have little angles or notches on them. If you're buying new rings, always look on the package to see which direction to put the notch, whether the ring goes that way or that way when you're reinstalling it. If you have a high miles or high hours, say off-road engine for example, on a dirt bike or snowmobile, and you know it has full floating wrist pins with these clips, and your compression is still perfect and your engine is still running great, it's sometimes a good idea after lots of hours and a few years just to pull your top end off the engine and replace those clips so they just, they just don't catastrophically let go one day without any warning and damage everything. Whenever reinstalling a piston in any kind of engine, lubricate all these moving parts, lubricate this with motor oil too, put some motor oil on the cylinder, and reinstall your piston. Of course you'll need the piston ring compressor, some look like a pair of pliers. If you want a redneck method, you can use a big hose clamp. Uh, another method is the one that looks like a toilet paper roll. It's just a band of thin metal strip that just tightens with like a ratchet clamp, squeezes the piston and pushes the rings in. And then a good way to get the piston is just gently tap it with the wooden handle of a hammer, very gently to knock it in. On some two-stroke engines like this, you can see the cast cylinder sleeve is made of a different material than the cylinder outside part, which is aluminum. This one's, I think, called a silicon boron carbide sleeve. It's made of an exotic metal that if it gets damaged like this one, you have to press it out, put a new sleeve in, or buy a whole new cylinder. Some have a chrome cylinder wall, and sometimes the chrome comes off in chunks. Then you have to re not rebore them, re-sleeve them, or change the whole cylinder. Only engines that have a cast iron cylinder sleeve can be rebored and work properly like new again. The ones with all aluminum cylinders don't even bother reboring them unless you have someone who can re-anodize them afterwards and harden the cylinder wall. Your engine can have two kind of knocking sounds when it's worn out. One is called crank knock and that's where of course the crankshaft journal isn't fitting at the right gap anymore to the crankshaft pin. That will eventually hammer itself to pieces and you'll throw a rod and the rod often gets thrown against the side of the block and punches a hole in it. It doesn't matter what kind of four-stroke engine or even two-stroke, that's what will happen. A little bit of a higher pitch knock, you know, not quite as deep a knock as this sound, means wrist pin play. 
This is actually more common on diesel engines. Diesel engines, because of their higher pressures up here, wear out wrist pins more often. When you're playing your wrist pin or your crank pin gets so great, you'll get another kind of knock that's even louder. And every time you rev your engine, you get like a clatter. That means the piston has enough slack in it around the crank journal or the wrist pin journal that it's actually going up and hitting the cylinder head and putting a little dent around the edge of the piston. So now you know most of the stuff you're supposed to be thinking about when you're taking a piston out of an engine or putting one back in and deciding whether you want to use a new one or a used one and reinstalling rings and stuff like that. Not such a big deal once it's all apart.